PGMC Celebrity Spotlight, where we get to visit the folks who have sung with us, hear their stories, and share their music, most of which has never been released before. I'm Ruben Reynolds, Music Director. And I am Bill, the husband. Oh, New York City, you are so pretty. I've lived here since I was itty bitty. Now I'm an actor in the Spring Spectacular at Radio City Music Hall with the Rockheads and all. Today we're talking about Laura Benanti. And one, and two, and three, and four, and five. Nailed it. 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 She sang with the chorus in 2015 at Symphony Hall, and it was stunningly spectacular. Yep. I have dreamed and enjoyed the view In these dreams I'd love to stop I am 17, I'm going on 18 I'll take care oh. of you great experience getting ready to um, ask her to work with us. We didn't realize it until later on that Ruben and I have been groupies for Laura Benanti for years. We've seen her on Broadway in Wedding Singer. She was Cinderella in Into the Woods. I saw her do Claudia in Nine. We saw Gypsy. We saw She Loves Me, My Fair Lady. Before I knew it, I was a Laura Benanti groupie. And so when we picked her up at the hotel in Boston and she got in the car and I was like, oh my God, I'm in the car with Laura Benanti. <laughs> <laughs> And she was so nice to work with. The first time we went to her, we were throwing out uh, opening songs, some way to really introduce her. And we came across the idea of using Brotherhood of Man. It's basically a male chorus dance number. And then all of a sudden, this soprano comes in from nowhere. Sort of swoops in. <laughs> so it was like really great to hear the audience response when they realized that the guy split and there she was. Now, she has, an, has a history with Gay Men's Courses, isn't that right? She does. She sung with many Gay Men's Courses. The first time was with the Gay Men's Course of Washington. And it's a really interesting story that when you listen to this song, you'll actually hear the whole story. But her uncle Robert uh, was in the Washington Gay Men's Course. So they did a Rogers and Hammerstein concert and they did Sound of Music and Laura sang Maria in from the Sound of Music and her uncle Robert sang the uh, Mother Abbess. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is. This is the Sound, Sound of, of music. music from the Sound of Music. Hi. Oh my gosh. 
Congratulations on your engagement. Thank you. That's so nice of you. I did, I just got engaged on Thursday. Right? To my amazing fiance, Patrick Brown, who is here. Um, happy Pride, everybody. I'm so honored to be singing with these gentlemen. Um, my late uncle Robert Wannaberger was one of the original um, members of the chorus, the Gay Men's Chorus of Washington, D.C. Um, so I grew up with the Gay Men's Chorus, um, and I feel so blessed to have had that privilege. It's one of the reasons why I make it my mission to sing with as many of these gentlemen as I possibly can. Um, I would like to apologize for how short my dress is. <laughs> I had no idea until I like, took it out of my little suitcase, put it on, and I was like, oh dear. <laughs> so just so no one is scandalized, please know that I am actually wearing my fiance's boxer shorts under here. <laughs> to see anything they don't want to see and has never wanted to see. So, you get it. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so my very first job on Broadway was when I was 18 years old and I was the understudy for Maria in The Sound of Music. I understudied a woman named Rebecca Luker. So now I had done all of my, Rebecca Luker, yay, she's amazing, exactly. Um, I had done all of my high school shows. I was not a professional actress. I heard that there was going to be an open audition for The Sound of Music, and I went in my fanciest dress, my prom dress, <laughs> because I figured that's what you wear to a Broadway audition, just your fanciest dress. So I was, I was inappropriately dressed, similar to today. <laughs> it's a theme. And I went in and I auditioned. Um, I was still in high school, I was 17 at the time. I handed them my, um, my picture and resume, which was my high school photo, and like a folded up handwritten, like, I played Golden, Fiddler on the Roof, when I was 15, <laughs> inappropriately. And um, I finished singing and they were like, do you have a, an updated picture and resume? Because uh, this is from high school. And I said, well, I'm in high school. And they said, will you excuse us? <laughs> and I went outside and I waited and they had me come back in and seven auditions later they cast me as one of the nuns and they also cast me as the understudy to Maria which was astonishing for an 18 year old kid to, to do that it was, it's an unlikely tale and oh thank you <laughs> I wasn't saying that for applause but I'll take it um so the first time I ever went on for Maria was actually during the two-week period that Rebecca Luker was on vacation. Um, and I, you know, the, there's the title song, The Sound of Music. And for the very beginning, my day in the hills has come to an end, I know, I would stand off in the wings and sing that and then run down this like beautiful fake mountain um, and throw my arms in the air in the classic Julie Andrews pose and sing the rest of the song. Now, I had a legitimate panic attack as I was singing the beginning of the song <laughs> off stage to the point where they were physically holding me there, letting me know that I, I had to go on. I was already singing. We could not stop. <laughs> um, I was 18 and all of a sudden was like, oh, wait a minute, this is Broadway? I gotta go. This feels too scary. So, um, and then I, I, I'm, they pushed me down the hill and I, <laughs> they did, legitimately. My dresser was like, they pushed me down the hill. I remember seeing the reflection of my shaking arms in the spotlight, and I got my hands over my head, and then I kept them there for the rest of the song. <laughs> and it looked a little something like this.
Getting ready to work with Laura, um, I started reflecting over the over the number of times we'd seen her on Broadway. We saw her in Gypsy and then um, went on the verge of the nervous breakdown, and She Loves Me and My Fair Lady. In fact, when we went to see She Loves Me on Broadway, um, she had already performed with us at that point, so I'm already a friend of Laura's now. And um, <laughs> we took our niece to go see She Loves Me, and so I had texted Laura ahead of time and said, can we meet afterwards? And I'd love to introduce you to our, uh, our niece. And Laura was so sweet and kind. She said, absolutely, meet me at the stage where we're done, and I'd be happy to meet her. Well, I get a text during intermission. Laura says, I'm not gonna be able to meet with you afterwards because I just found out I'm pregnant and I don't think I'm feeling too good tonight. <laughs> she, but she almost had to um, call in the understudy to finish the performance because she had morning sickness. And, at night. At night. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was a glorious performance and I'm one of her biggest fans. If my fanboy geekdom couldn't get even more intense about Laura, not only do we love seeing her on stage, you know, doing the thing that she was born to do, which is be on Broadway and be in these shows, but then again, now she has a really, really amazing television career. You may not know this, but there's this little TV show called Law & Order SVU. <laughs> Apparently it's popular. <laughs> I've watched every single episode. Several times. Yeah, and Laura <laughs> is on that. She is having a wonderful new chapter in her life portraying a very, very, very famous public figure. Uh, and she <laughs> nails it. We don't have to wait because joining me now is the First Lady of the United States, Melania Trump. Madam First Lady, thank you so much for being here. Hello, Stephen. Happy Elephant Convention to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> what I love about it is even though she does Melania, it isn't mean. It's funny and it's witty and there's still, you get a sense that there's humanity in there. And, and so there's nothing hateful about it or mean about it. It's just a really fun, loving parody. She was also on, on TV, still is, on a show called Younger, which stars Sutton Foster. We love that too. And we love that too. And it's amazing to see them together think, we performed with both of them. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Laura singing, I'm glad about I'm not young anymore from Gigi. Oh, clapping's nice. <laughs> Thank you all so much. You're such a wonderful audience. So I had the great honor um, a couple of years ago to do the Sound of Music Live on NBC starring Carrie Underwood. She played Maria and I played Elsa. Uh, the Baroness. Thank you, four people. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there was actually an amazing hashtag on Twitter that was happening even before the show that was hashtag gaze for Elsa. <laughs> so I knew who I was playing for. Um, this next song was inspired by being in a Starbucks and listening to two 20 year olds have a conversation. Yep. That's exactly what you think. It went a little something like this. And I'm not even kidding. Oh wait, we're not ready yet, I'm so sorry. This, this needs silence, this needs utter silence. Um, not a pin dropping. Um, pins are fine. Um, so it went like this. I don't need him to call me. I don't need him to text me. 
I just want him to tweet me. And I was like, <laughs> And I turned to my friend and I said, I know what song I'm putting into my act. to sit here in the shade with none of the woes of man and maid. I'm glad I'm not young anymore. The rivals that don't exist at all, the feeling you're only two feet tall. I'm glad that I'm not young anymore. No more confusion. No morning after surprise. Am I right? No self-delusion. That when you're telling those lies, he isn't wise. And even if love comes through the door, the kind that goes on forevermore, forevermore is shorter than before. Oh, I'm so glad that I'm not young theater civilians out there, um, there is this thing called miscast shows where people sing songs that they ordinarily wouldn't have done because they're not the right age or the right, you know, whatever. And they usually do it for funny. It's usually done for comic effect. Laura is going to be treating us now to her own version of a miscast medley called The Inappropriate Medley. Uh, we don't want to spoil any of the surprises in it because the songs that are in, this, in the medley are the, what's really funny about it. So for your listening enjoyment, get ready to laugh. Here's Laura Benanti singing her inappropriate medley. So this next song is actually um, a medley of songs. And for me, it's the most um, emotional thing that I do in my set. They're my favorite songs in the world. They really speak to my heart. They are from my heart to yours. And I hope that you can take them in the spirit in which I intend them. All the single ladies. <laughs> All the single ladies. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. Now put your hands up. Oh. 
One of the things about Laura that is so amazing is how she pours her heart and soul into everybody around her. When the COVID lockdown started, she started thinking, you know, there are all of these high school students who aren't going to get to do their musicals. Well, this is all insane. Um, very few people are at work. Most of my stuff is getting canceled because uh, I'm in the business of being around a lot of people, as most of us are. And this may seem silly, but I know that a lot of high schools were going to have their musicals, and those musicals got canceled. And that is a bummer, because I know for so many of us, I know for me, my high school musical was like a lifesaver. So if you would like to sing a song that you are not going to get to sing now and tag me, I want to see you. I want to hear it. Stay safe, everybody. Welcome back to GMA. And those are just some of the thousands of videos that students from across the country have been posting on social media with the hashtag Sunshine Songs. Using the hashtag Sunshine Songs, so many people responding. seen they are 
like this all-female production of Fiddler on the Roof. So, how did you come up with this idea? My mom is a voice teacher and she was saying to me that she just felt so sad for so many of her students because they're so disappointed that they're not going to be able to perform. And I was just thinking about how important my high school musical was to me. And I thought, okay, you know what, let me just send a quick video. Maybe some of those kids will want to send me um, videos of themselves performing. And um, it's turned into quite a thing. I'm really, I'm really <laughs> happy for these kids. Can you just tell people who might be thinking, oh my gosh, with all that's going on, it's too bad that they're not going to be able to perform, but is it really a big deal? It is to so many. Can you help them understand it, that? It is a big deal to so many. You know, for a lot of these kids, it's the thing they look forward to all year. It's the one time they feel seen, which is, I think, really what we all want. But, you know, musical theater is a bit of a niche <laughs> thing, you know? <laughs> it's not like football and basketball and, you know, every. I just remember feeling when I was in high school, like, this is the one time a year people go like, maybe she's not that weird. Aww. Maybe she's just talented, Aww. you know? So, and look, I'm not saying that this is gonna cure what's happening right. with us. You know, science will hopefully cure what's happening mm -hmm. with us. But I do think that while we're having, you know, a diet of a lot of uh, bad news, it's helpful to have just, you know, a little sampling of something bright. So I mentioned that um, my late Uncle Bob was uh, um, a part of the Gay Men's Chorus of DC. And this song that we're about to sing, actually, uh, the first time I ever sang it was in 2003 with the Gay Men's Chorus. Um, we, not only did we sing this next song, but um, I played Maria in A Sound of Music medley, and my Uncle Bob played the Mother Abbess. <laughs> yeah. So this song is very meaningful to me because I sang it with him, and that was actually the last time I ever saw him. He, um, he passed away about three weeks later, very suddenly, and um, that chorus uh, was there for my family and for me, and uh, so it's very meaningful to me. Enjoy the view. 
of stories to help you guys understand um, why I am the way that I am. I, uh, I grew up in New Jersey. Um, thank you, one person. Um, yeah. I grew up absolutely obsessed with musical theater. I could sing the entire score of Stephen Sondheim's Follies by the time I was 11 years old. Yeah. It makes you extremely popular with the other children. No, it does not. Um, when I was in high school, and all of my girlfriends were dressing for Halloween like slutty bunnies, um, I dressed like Fosca from Stephen Sondheim's Passion. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know this musical, it's the darkest musical in the world. It's about a woman who becomes obsessed with a man, stalks him, essentially convinces him to be in love with her. They make love, and then she dies. Yeah, something about my high school heart was like, that seems like love. That seems right. So literally, I, I would go trick-or-treating with my mom, dressed as Fosca, um, around our neighborhood, just me and my mom, and I would go up to the doorbell and be like, ding dong. I do not read to think. <laughs> and they were like, no, thank you. No. <laughs> thank you. My mom's in the back like, It's hard for her. <laughs> when I was uh, nine years old, I cried on the bus the entire way home because nobody in my class knew who Rosemary Clooney was. <laughs> yeah. I was like a 45-year-old gay man in a little girl's body. <laughs> yes. That's true. But part of the reason why I loved musical theater so much is because when I turned on the radio, I didn't hear any voices that sounded like mine. I'm a soprano. And when I turned on the radio, I heard pop and rock. And even now, it's, even theater is all pop and rock. And listen, I love belting. I love pretending to belt. I love listening to people belt. But sometimes I feel like, are we going to be belted off the face of the earth? Is there just going to be like a soprano museum where it's a hologram of Barbara Cook like singing a perfectly placed high C, just like, ooh. There's gonna be an island where they send me and Kristen Chenoweth and Kelly O'Hara. And we're just gonna drink out of coconuts and sing glitter and be gay at each other. <laughs> Soprano Isle, now on Bravo. There's only one personal assistant. Who will get her? And the answer is Audra McDonald. <laughs> this next song is my favorite soprano song in the entire world. Bed, bed, I couldn't go to bed. My head's too light to try to set it down. Sleep, sleep, I couldn't sleep tonight. Not for all the jewels in the crown. I could have danced all night. I could have danced all night. And still have been for more. I could have spread my wings and done a thousand things I've never done before. I'll never know what made it so exciting. Why all at once my I only know 
still have picked for more. So much twirling. I'm gonna spread my wings and build a thousand. Okay, that's enough. I've never done it before. Back to me. I'll never know what made it so. The next song that we're going to play for you that Laura sang on stage um, is a beautiful ballad called A Quiet Thing. It's from a musical called Flora the Red Menace. It was originally sung by Liza Minnelli. Um, and Liza Minnelli and Laura Benanti are about as polar opposite as you can get <laughs> as far as voices go. Liza's a belter and Laura's a soprano. But um, Laura took this song that Liza had made famous and made it her own. And it is a beautiful, gorgeous, stirring um, song about what it means when your dreams finally come true. This is a quiet thing from Floor of the Red Mask. And it may sound a little bit different because we were at Symphony Hall, which has incredible acoustics. So Laura put down the mic and went and sat on the edge of the stage and sang without amplification. So this next song, I'm gonna come over here and sing from the edge of the stage. I'm gonna sing it without a microphone. Oh gosh, how am I gonna do this? <laughs> Did it. <laughs> Thank you. So this next song is um, one of my favorite songs in the world, and I really, truly didn't fully understand it until I met... Am I going to be in the dark for this? Are you kidding me? <laughs> we'll wait. Got it. <laughs> I truly didn't fully understand the meaning of the song until I met my beautiful fiance, Patrick Brown. And that's the truth. When it all comes to
So on the Rodgers and Hammerstein recording that uh, Laura put out with the Washington Gay Men's Course, she sings this arrangement of Climb Every Mountain that is spine tingling. When you hear her voice soaring above all the men, you, there's no way you can not be moved. This is Climb Every Mountain from The Sound of Music. I just want to thank you again so much for being here and supporting these wonderful men. Thank you for having me. It's been an absolute joy to sing with them for you. Street. 
During this time of trouble, we are working very, very hard to keep the chorus going and to create new music and to keep the morale of the guys up so that we can be here to sing for you as soon as it's possible. If you like the music you've heard tonight, click on the link below or text give BGMC to 41411 or just go to bgmc.org. Thank you for being part of the Boston Gay Men's Course. From me, from Bill, and for every member of the Boston Gay Men's Course.